Welcome to The Mushroom Show, the one place where you need to be if you want to stay on top of all the cool things happening in the world of mushrooms. My name is Tony Shields and I am super fired up right now because just last week, two major events occurred in the world of mushrooms. First was the first ever Mushroom Summit and the other event was Psychedelic Science 2023, both of which just wrapped up in Denver, Colorado. Now, I just got back from attending these two monumental events. So I thought instead of doing a typical Mushroom Show episode where we break it down into different segments and dive deep into different stories, I thought it'd be fun to just recap these two events and fill you in on all the things that you need to know. Lots of things are happening in the world of mushrooms and I'm so excited to share it with you. Now, if you follow me on Twitter at FreshCapTony, you might already know some of these bits of news and info because I was tweeting throughout the event. But if not, no worries at all because we're gonna cover it all right here on the show. First of all though, I need to say how absolutely humbled and honored I am I cannot believe how many people I saw while attending the conference that knew of the mushroom show. It really blew me away. There was people from all over the world. Some people told me, for example, that they had started mushroom businesses after watching the show or after watching the channel. Other people told me that they started to learn how to grow mushrooms and it's made a hugely positive impact on their lives. And this just went on and on. And again, it was just so cool to meet people in real life that are not only learning about mushrooms within the mushroom community, but now also getting excited about mushrooms and contributing to the mushroom movement in their own way. It also left me wondering a little bit, why is this the case? What is it about mushrooms that make them so special? And I really do think it has something to do with the fact that mushrooms are able to touch every aspect of life in a way. For example, considering psilocybin mushrooms. Now research is showing what people have known about psilocybin for a very long time, that they have this amazing potential to heal. We're hearing things like addiction and PTSD and mental health the ability to foster deeper connections, improving mindfulness, the list really goes on and on. And as Paul Stamets did say at the conference during his lecture was that the only problem with psilocybin is that it seems too good to be true. Functional mushrooms are also helping people in an enormity of ways. I get to hear day in and day out the benefits that people are able to receive from these amazing mushrooms, some of them absolutely life-changing. And there was one presentation in particular on functional mushrooms at the Mushroom Summit that literally gave me goosebumps, which I'll tell you about shortly. But it doesn't stop there. There's mycotechnology, there's mushroom growing and mushroom farming just as a food source. There's the different ways that mushrooms are helping the environment, providing people with business opportunities, novel compounds being created. Again, the list really does just keep going on and on. The future of mushrooms is bright and I am more fired up than ever to continue spreading the spores. So let's jump into the recap. So the first thing I wanna talk about is the Mushroom Summit, which was a two-day gathering. It was really more of a B2B conference or a business-to-business -business conference where leaders from the functional mushroom industry got together to chat about the industry. And when I first heard about this, I wasn't really convinced that it made a lot of sense. So this was really the first time ever that all the people involved in the space got together to talk about some of the main issues and opportunities in functional mushrooms. And since this is such a new and emerging industry with so much potential, it only makes sense to really bring industry folks together so that we can help make things as good as they possibly can and benefit the most people. I also need to add that this was really surreal for me. You know, when I started this with Tegan all these years ago, I had no idea that this kind of thing would ever be possible. I mean, sure, I was stoked about mushrooms, but to see how far it's come is unbelievable and we are really just getting started. So here is a picture of myself and Del Jolly at the end of the conference. Del is the co-founder of a mushroom company called Umbo, but he is also the co-chair of the Mushroom Summit and deserves a lot of credit for putting together this very important event. One of the highlights of the Mushroom Summit was a vigorous debate on mycelium versus fruiting body in mushroom supplements featuring Jeff Chilton, who is the owner of a company called Namex, who makes functional mushroom extracts. We have had Jeff on the show before. He is an absolute legend in the space and very knowledgeable on this topic. Now, for anyone in the mushroom industry, you'll know that this is a very contentious and heated debate, a very contentious topic of discussion, and even more so now as Jeff Chilton has actually just filed a citizen's petition with the FDA to encourage proper labeling on products to differentiate between different parts of the mushroom, for example, mycelium versus fruiting body. For example, if it contains mycelium, label it as mycelium, and if it contains fruiting body or the mushroom part of the mushroom, label it as mushrooms. 
Now, Jeff argues that this only makes sense and it is consistent with how other herbs and other supplements are labeled within the supplement industry. Now, this debate got off to an interesting start right away when Jeff said, this is not a debate between mycelium versus fruiting body. This is really a debate between mycelium on grain versus fruiting body, which are two completely different things. I have talked about this before on the show and some other videos, but basically it's this idea that you can grow mushroom mycelium out on a sterilized grain, and then you can just grind that up and sell it as a mushroom product. But unfortunately, consumers, if you're not a mushroom farmer or you don't really understand the mushroom growing process or you haven't done a lot of research into mushroom supplements, a lot of consumers don't know the difference, which means they might think they're buying mushrooms, but they're actually buying something that is really high in grain starch which is not great. Another good example of why this is important is the reishi mushroom. Now, reishi mushroom fruiting body contains high concentrations of triterpenoids, which are the reason why people use this mushroom for certain benefits like relaxation. It's often called the spirit mushroom, but the triterpenoids are contained in the fruiting body and not in the mycelium. So the distinction really is important. That would be like growing Psilocybe cubensis or magic mushrooms on grain, grinding up that grain and expecting to experience the effects of psilocybin, even though it would be way easier to just grow that mycelium out on a grain, well, nobody does that because it doesn't actually produce the intended compounds, and it's way more obvious with something like psilocybin. Now, it is gonna be really interesting to see where this debate goes. Again, this is nothing new. It's been hotly debated for a very long time, but it does seem to be coming to some sort of a head, so it'll be interesting to see where it all ends up. Now, if you're interested in the nitty gritty of all of this, I will put the link to some articles that you can read in the description below. The closing session of the Mushroom Summit was something that was much more unifying. Now, industry giants can argue back and forth endlessly over what makes the best mushroom product or what part of the mushroom should be used. But at the end of the day, the only reason why we should be creating functional mushroom products in the first place is to really help people. That can sometimes get lost in the discussions, which is why it was so cool to see the presentation by Sarah Kate Boylan. She is the Chief Executive Officer of Lily's Lighthouse, a nonprofit dedicated to, among other things, spreading the word about the potential for functional mushrooms to help people with epilepsy epilepsy, and I'm not going to lie, this presentation gave me goosebumps. Their stated goal is to use the foundation to fund a clinical study into non-psychedelic medicinal mushrooms, including but not limited to reishi and lion's mane for the treatment of seizures that will eventually result in the development of a mushroom-based therapeutic. And there is a reason, of course, why they think that that is important. Lily's Lighthouse is named after a young girl named Lily who has epilepsy, which as I learned in the presentation is really dangerous. In fact, Kate mentioned during the talk that epileptic seizures kill more people in the US than breast cancer, which was pretty stunning to hear. And you can go ahead and read the story, which I'll link in the description, but to sum it up, Lily would have seizures all the time, apparently up to 50 seizures per day, to the point where it was not allowing for a very good quality of life. If there was something like a rapid temperature change, she could have a seizure. If she heard a certain noise, she could have a seizure. If she would eat something that she might be allergic to, it could trigger a seizure. On and on, she had endless triggers for these seizures, again, having up to 50 per day. Now, Lily's parents tried a number of different traditional methods for dealing with this, and nothing really worked. In fact, some of these treatments actually made it worse. That is until they found out about functional mushrooms. Lily started using functional mushrooms, and apparently since then, her life has completely changed. According to Kate, she went from having 50 seizures a day to having no seizures whatsoever in nine weeks, and today we'll only have one every couple of months or so. Now, of course, this is not conclusive, right? There could be a multitude of factors. Of course, Lily is on some more traditional medications as well, but it's still pretty interesting, and that is exactly why they want to use this nonprofit called Lily's Lighthouse in order to help fund research that could really try and figure out what is going on here. It's hard to explain, but again, this presentation was just really so electrifying to see because 
a lot of people use functional mushrooms just to kind of feel better or maybe they have something that they might be trying to deal with but to see it on this scale where it's so life-changing for somebody was just absolutely electrifying one of the speakers ended this session by saying something along the lines of let's not waste our time creating mushroom brands let's spark a movement and absolutely change lives which of course everybody can agree to and received some huge applause and got everybody absolutely fired up about the potential of functional mushrooms. Again, this summit was a super cool event. I'm very excited to see where it all leads. And I think the future is bright for these mushrooms. After the mushroom summit, I obviously had to go check out Psychedelic Science 2023. Now this one isn't all about mushrooms, but obviously psilocybin mushrooms played a pretty big role in the conference. And I have to say, this was another really surreal moment for me. It's just pretty wild to be in a major US city and there's huge banners that say Psychedelic Science 2023 and thousands of people every day going to speak about these things, interact about these things, and just learn about psychedelics in general, which really seemed to be coming into the mainstream. And walking around the convention center and the exhibition hall, there was really just so much going on. It was impossible to take it all in, but here are some of the highlights. First is the mushroom grow kits. Now, as many of you know, Colorado recently passed Prop 122, which was really groundbreaking in terms of how psilocybin is regulated in the state. And it also set the groundwork for the same thing to potentially happen in other states as well. Now, I'm no legal expert, and I know these things can be complicated, but as far as I know, retail sales of psilocybin mushrooms are still illegal, but growing mushrooms is no longer a crime in the state for adults over the age of 21, even though the possession is still a federal crime. Either way, because of the changes in the rules, in the main exhibition hall, there were tons of companies and groups showing off their mushroom grow kits, basically fully colonized blocks that provide a foolproof way to grow these mushrooms. Now, there are also companies that were showing off different strains, whether isolated in a Petri dish or liquid culture syringe, but also spore syringes and spore prints. And again, this was very surreal for me to see. You know, I've been involved in mushrooms for a very long time. I've been interested in mushrooms for a very long time, but I never expected that in 2023, I would be in a major conference center in a major US city, seeing huge fruitings of Psilocybe cupensis mushrooms. There was huge tubs of dried mushrooms, there was people discussing various strains of penis envy while at the same time swiping their credit card to get different culture syringes. And it really makes me wonder as mushrooms go mainstream, what does the future hold? Is it going to just brazenly keep getting pushed forward and eventually will it be rescheduled or are we going to see a potential dieback from overly enthusiastic mycophiles who maybe pushed it a little too far and now have to retreat? It really is a tough question to be honest and I have no idea how it's going to pan out, what's going to happen over the next few years. I can tell you though, after my trip to Denver, it really does appear that mushrooms have arrived in the mainstream and I'm excited to follow where it goes over the next few years. Speaking of mushrooms going mainstream, I got the chance to check out Paul Stamets and his lecture at Psychedelic Science 2023. Now, of course, he is a hugely popular character in the space with lots of interesting things to say. And although there was nothing brand new announced at the conference, there's still some pretty interesting things that he's been working on and I wanted to highlight some of them here. He started the talk by saying, psilocybin mushrooms connect people across cultures, across continents, and across time, showing some of the ancient hieroglyphs of mushrooms from a recent trip to Egypt, which I thought was pretty neat. You know, a lot of people like to think that mushrooms, because they're becoming more popular, are kind of this new thing, but really people have been using mushrooms for millennia and his trip to Egypt hoped to prove some of that out. He then took the crowd on a little foraging trip showing different strains of mushrooms that grow in North America and talked about the absurdity of the current law in which people could be breaking it without even knowing that they are breaking it. For example, there was a species of Gymnopolis that was growing on his boat Boat, and he mentioned that you know he is probably one of the few people in the world that could recognize this as a psilocybin containing mushroom so he postulated the question if somebody was randomly harvesting mushrooms in the woods and they happen to accidentally pick this one are they breaking the law and technically yes they are breaking the law because now they're in possession of a psilocybin containing mushrooms so he didn't 
quite catch all the details, but it sounds like he has written a petition or a letter of opinion to the DEA to try and allow for people to harvest up to 100 grams of mushrooms without it being a crime, which I think makes sense because it is a little bit absurd that people can pick wild mushrooms and all of a sudden be breaking the law even if they don't know it. He also talked about how absurd it is for any fungi or any plant to be illegal and I think a lot of people would agree with the fact that that does seem pretty absurd. Now this led him to talking about a variety of different research studies like this one that's been done for smoking cessation or studies for helping to treat alcoholism, for increasing increasing connection to nature, for creative thinking and empathy, for end of life anxiety, and much, much more. And he continued by saying, the only problem with psilocybin is that it just seems too good to be true. Which is a very interesting idea that, yeah, of course, we don't want to call anything a panacea. It's not like it's going to cure everything. But boy, does it sure seem like this is an important compound that we need to look at and see where it can most benefit society. He then talked about the combination of lion's mane, which is a powerful functional mushroom, with psilocybin along with niacin and taking all of those together as a microdosing protocol known as the Stamet Stack. Now, this is now a patented protocol and we did do an entire video about it, so I won't dive too deep into it. If you want to go watch that video, go ahead. We kind of dive through the research, also dive through some of the formulation and the thought behind this stack. And it is pretty interesting. I think one of the main outcomes of it is, hey, we still don't know exactly how this is working, but potentially this could be hugely beneficial. And so far, the research has shown that the largest benefits has been for older individuals and potentially helping with cognitive function. So again, if you're interested in that topic, go ahead and watch that video that we did on it or click the link in the description where you can go read deeper and actually check out the patent and the paper. And finally, he touched on this idea that I have definitely thought about before. I'm sure many other people in the space have thought about it before, even though perhaps they haven't verbalized it. And it's this idea that he wouldn't want to just give psilocybin mushrooms to anyone, even though he does believe they could be hugely beneficial. He said that people who sell mushrooms have a moral responsibility, a professional responsibility to to help them, to guide them. You can't just sell them and, and I really couldn't make out everything else that he said because of such a huge applause. I think the crowd definitely agreed with that sentiment. But again, it's this idea that these are powerful substances. Sure, they can be hugely beneficial, but I think maybe he's being kind of wary of the influx of interest and various business interests in the space that might not have the best intentions in mind. And I know there's some tension that exists in the not only functional mushrooms, but also in psilocybin mushrooms on this very point in that sure, there could be business opportunities in psilocybin, but there is some sort of a moral responsibility for people to usher them in properly. So whatever that means, it's hard to say exactly, but it's definitely something interesting to think about. But I think the idea is that yes, these things are insanely powerful and like any powerful tool, we need to treat them with respect and be careful how they are distributed and making sure that it's done in a responsible manner. And I kind of agree. I mean, if they continue to become more and more mainstream, the intentionality of it and the way it's done is going to become a very important factor for the long-term staying power. So that is it for the recap. There really is so much more that was going on in the conference, but like I said, it was huge. It was impossible to catch it all but it's definitely exciting and I can't wait to go check it out again next year. So that's it for this episode of The Mushroom Show. As I mentioned, just a really quick wrap up of those two very important conferences. Again, if you wanna stay connected in between episodes of The Mushroom Show, if you wanna stay up to date on a day by day, and sometimes even an hour by hour basis, like I was doing at these two conferences, make sure you go ahead and follow me at FreshCapTony on Twitter. It's just a really great place to stay connected. And finally, I wanted to mention, if you like mushrooms, if you like The Mushroom Show, go ahead and hit that like button. It really helps the channel grow. And if you want to see future episodes of the show, go ahead and hit that subscribe button as well. We did just cross 400,000 subscribers, which is amazing. So thank you so much if you're subscribed. How cool would it be if we could get a mushroom channel or a mushroom show to a million subscribers? I think that'd be pretty wild. So if you're not yet subscribed, go ahead and do that if you feel like it. Thank you so much for watching and we'll see you in the next episode.